And we are live. Hi, ladies. Happy Saturday. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's doing great. My name is Elle, and I'm coming to you here with my wonderful friend, um, Linda Sims. And uh, she's absolutely amazing. Love her so much. Um, one of my um, <laughs> friends here in the Bay Area. We've uh, And it's interesting how you connect with people, right? And, and some people you just really connect with and so she's one of those people that i i love her heart i love what she's doing and uh, always love sharing and chatting with her and i uh, just realized how much i missed already we just it seems like we just seen each other <laughs> oh, oh my god thank you i just absolutely adore you you are gorgeous seriously gorgeous inside outside and um thank you for giving us giving me this opportunity i i just love what you're doing <laughs> awesome. So tell us, tell us, please, the viewers, and of course, I know your beautiful background and where you are, but please tell us where you're from, your your background, your upbringing. Okay. So, um, well, I'm obviously Australian with the accent. Um, I moved to the Bay Area five years ago, so I married my American husband, and um, but my parents are actually Croatian. So it was funny when Elle and I met. Um, I was actually doing a presentation about my background and she's like, what? <laughs> she's, and so she had no idea that uh, my parents were Croat are Croatian, they're still alive, and um, they migrated to Australia in the 60s. And so we were born in Australia. I've got four sisters and, um, you know, we, we grew up speaking Croatian, doing all the Croatian traditional things. Um, I thought everybody was Croatian. I remember starting kindergarten speaking Croatian and everybody was like, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, that's where it kind of all began. And, um, you know, I'm really proud of our, our heritage and our culture and I'm very proud of being an Aussie as well, even though I live in the U.S. now. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of my background. <laughs> I love that. So, so many cultures. I love that. Melting pot. Australia is a melting pot of so many cultures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my friend lives in Sydney, Australia, and I really want to go visit. Well, I've been planning for years to go visit. Now, of course, after after the whole COVID is over, I have to go visit. Maybe we can go together. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yes, definitely. It's really hard to get in there right now. So it's probably one of the strictest countries to get into from what I was hearing from one of my travel buddies. <laughs> um, but I'm in so because I want to get back as soon as possible as well. But Sydney's beautiful. I think it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. So tell us, can you tell us um, how your upbringing shaped you, uh, being who you are, and what makes you you? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> so, um, well, I, I, I'm one of those people that believe that your upbringing definitely shapes who you are um, because I think if I hadn't had the upbringing that I had, I wouldn't be, I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today. So um, my dad was very strict. Oh, my gosh, both of my parents were super strict. Um, but my dad, um, you know, he had, well, they had five daughters and he was extremely strict and just worked really, really hard to put us through um, good schools. You know, we went to Catholic schools. We were straight-A students. Well, my older sister and I were. I don't know about my younger sisters. I don't think they were. <laughs> but um, And he was always just, you know, it was just either you had to work or you are at school. And so even in school holidays, I remember we used to have to go working on the building site with Dad. And it was just horrible. It was like we never relaxed or had a break. Mm -hmm. so I remember at the age of 13 lying about my age and going to get a job and um, I started working in a delicatessen and that's when I really started to realize oh my gosh you know what I can actually work and earn an income as well and I was earning my you know little three dollars fifteen an hour and I worked 20 hours in the deli and I saved up and bought a swatch watch but <clears throat> the thing was was that dad was always saying to us you know, don't do any backbreaking work like he was doing. And he said, you know, make sure you study hard so we could become pencil pushers is what he used to call it, which was basically meaning work in an office somewhere. So that was the good side of my dad. My dad also had this um, just not a great side. So he was all, also very, I'm going to say, like quite narcissistic. 
and um, always putting us down as well. And um, I was probably a bit more of the rebel of the sisters and, um, you know, wanted to prove him wrong because he was, um, I was, it's funny, I was talking to Belma about this, but my, my father was like that traditional type of Croatian where you had to have a son to carry on the name and he was unhappy that he'd had five daughters and wanted a son. No. So, um, you know, he did put us working on the building site and everything else, but it's everything that he wanted us to be, but it was also like he was telling us that we could never be as well because we weren't boys and to him boys were everything. So um, the rebellious side of me was like, I'm going to prove you wrong, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to be successful even though you say that I'm not going to be. And then my mother, on the other hand, um, came to a country, had no knowledge of the English language and didn't try to have any knowledge either. So she kind of locked herself away, unfortunately, and just missed out on life. <clears throat> so both of those two factors together, I just remember being eight years old going, I can't wait till I'm 25. When I'm 25, the world is going to be great and I'm going to earn my own money and I'm not going to feel trapped, which is I think how my mother felt because she wanted to go back to Croatia but wasn't working and didn't know how. And then it was like, I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to ever feel trapped and have no income or money of my own. But then I also had my dad on the other side where he was telling us, you, you know, you have to become an office person, but then again, you won't be successful. So it was like, no, I'm going to prove you wrong. So I, you know, I started, I was working in a deli. I did that all throughout university. Um, I got my, my commerce degree. I started working at Kraft Foods and I was always a saver. So from there, it was like I, I equated working hard and having a goal to accomplishment and achievement. And so that's kind of how I've lived my life. It's like, okay, I have a goal, I'm going to go for it, and I have to work hard and then I'll achieve that goal. And always running in the back of my mind is like I don't want to ever feel like I have to, I'm trapped or I have to rely on somebody for an income. And so that's what keeps driving me to this day. And I think that's also where I really connect with you, Elle, because it's like there are so many women out there who feel the same way. Mm -hmm. They feel trapped or they feel like they couldn't do anything without their husband or their husband's finances. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, it doesn't have to be that way. Like you can still have a life of your own and your own person and your own being and be able to earn an, a great income and have a great relationship and, and move forward. And so I'm really passionate about helping women with that because I've come across far too many that, that, that don't feel that way. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I can so relate. And uh, when you spoke about your mom, it's I totally can relate. And, yeah, and thank you for sharing your story, Linda. I didn't know those details, so I'm just listening in. Well, wow. a little the iceberg. There's a lot more detail, but yeah, I wouldn't go into that. I, I've always said I'm writing a book one day from a young child. I said I, I've got to write a book about our lives one day. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, we should do. We should do next anthology. We should have <laughs> okay. <an> <laughs> But yeah, you were. Who you are? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you for saying for sharing that, and I totally agree. Yeah, I think we can do so much more. Yeah. And uh, the the programming, the self sabotage, or whatever it is that's holding us, and and that's why we do what we do, right? And Marsha, hi, love, good to see you. I hi, see some comments coming in, and Jesus, great afternoon. Um, thank you, guys. So <clears throat> yes, that's amazing. So I know you shared a little bit how that helped shape you and is there anything else that part of your culture or tradition that you keeping to this day mm -hmm. yeah so it's funny because um i married aaron who is american and i still remember the very first easter we had together and about a, you know a week prior i'm sitting there coloring eggs for example boiled eggs and he's like what are you doing and i'm like don't you do this and so it's kind of like something that I've been doing all of my life and I'm surprised that other people don't do it. And, and, and I'm coming to this realisation of, oh, my gosh, there are so many different cultures out there and this is just something that's traditional to my culture. So 
on Easter Sunday, we'll crack eggs and have the little egg fight. Not fight, but, you know, whose egg is not going to crack and then they're, they're the lucky person for the day. Um, <laughs> this might be, um, it, it, it's a little bit superstitious, but I remember when I went back to Croatia, um, I was the first in my family to go back and I was 18 and I just remember how superstitious these people are. So I was meeting my, my grandparents and, you know, they were talking about really odd things like putting dirt under a doormat and that brings blessings to the home or um, taking it from Croatia to, to the house back in Australia, making sure the house is blessed. So it's kind of like... <laughs> Superstitions have lived with me, so I'm like, okay, we have to bless the house as soon as we bought it. Aaron thinks I'm crazy, but he thankfully goes along with all of those little things. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of ingrained in me now. Now I think I've adopted more of a sage stick, you know, go around and make sure there's um, good energy around the house and I'm really into all that type of energy work. But I think it's kind of stemming from this stu superstitious um culture that Croatia is as well so there are a couple of those wow I think our cultures are so similar oh my gosh we have so many so many workers. and I remember my mom was living with us here visiting and my husband is American too right and so she was she was doing something it's something connected to money like you you shouldn't do this because you will never have money and he was just going nuts he's like what how does it make sense <laughs> But it's so cool. and it's it's ridiculous things like little things like even you cannot sweep the floor in the evening. I think something like that, or take the trash oh. out. Anyway, it's <laughs> on a Sunday, like it's super bad. So even now, if I do clothes washing on a Sunday, I'm like, I'm sorry, God, <laughs> I'm washing clothes. <laughs> I've had time all week. <laughs> Crazy. Well, I haven't heard that one. Wow. But that's so cool, and that just shows how similar it's. It's so interesting what you're sharing. I can so relate uh, from from where I grew up. Um, so I love, I love it, I love it. Yeah, superstition is huge in in our country as well. Oh, yeah. so much. I mean, I remember being in Croatia and my grandfather saying to me. So I used to walk from village to village, and everybody knew. Ah, oh, you. Oh, that Sertovic girl, we heard about you from Australia. I knew your mum 50 years ago. Well, it wasn't 50 because I was only, uh, well, yeah, actually, no, probably like 20, 30 years ago at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, But I remember walking to my grandfather's house and he said, how did you get here? And I said, I walked. And he said, aren't you frightened? Um, so he said in Croatia, Nesa Sekirash or Vjeshtice. And I'm like, what? What are Vjeshtice? And he said, and so I figured out they were witches. So he's telling me there's witches in the bushes and I'm like, what? And so it freaked me out. So I made sure I got a bike <laughs> and I was riding in between each of the villages. You were how old? I was 18 and I was still scared and he's telling me this. It was just it was just weird. But so so do you think he was telling you this to protect you from not the witches, but to protect you so you'd be careful at night? Or being a girl, like young girl? No, this was during the day I was walking from village to village. They truly believed that they truly believed it, that there is witches. Oh, wow. It's really that so interesting. That is so cool. I, lo yeah. I love this conversation because it's so, so interesting. It just shows that culture. And it's, it, it comes from so long ago, right? But a lot of them still follow those traditions. That reminds me of my grandmother. <laughs> well, what? Sorry, you just broke up, Elle. That reminds me of my grandmother as well. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And then the coffee cup reading. Like even now, if I make myself a Turkish coffee, I'll tw I'll twirl the cup, I'll put it upside down, then I'll be looking for images. And Aaron's like, that is such BS. And I'm like, no, it's not. I can see this hill. <laughs> <laughs> I love it hard because that's my my grandmother used to do exactly that she will you know we and we we were we were uh, little and so we'll sit down and she can tell us what's going to happen looking at the coffee cup uh, after we finish coffee so yeah that was my grandmother so oh and my god has it come true Elle? Huh? do you remember any of the stories have any of the have any of the stories come true that your grandmother told you hmm i don't remember the details um 
but it's just it was something like she will see a horse with with a person coming on a horse on the over the heel and the, you know there's this and all I and I'm looking where do you see that and I'm like I'm trying to find it right <laughs> And then she was like, oh, like some of it finished, and then she will really. So that was she was big with that. That's funny how our cultures are so similar. Um, oh my gosh, so similar. I could mm -hmm. tell many stories, but we'd be here all day on, on things. <laughs> yeah. that we're really right. doing some came true. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's so good. good. I love it. I love it. Um, so this this is so great this is the reason like why i love this culture uh women of the world network bringing cultures together this is exactly why it uh it's just why we're doing this because you know it's sometimes we don't realize how much ha we have in common versus how much differences we have and yeah. then we start talking right i've never even been to you know to where you're from like australia or uh your country but you know it's it's interesting. With so many similarities. Um, and so, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it's just, it's just nice to have it. Like, I actually feel I'm, I'm very proud of it because it's like, I don't know. It, 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 it is who I am, and I'm so proud of, of of that culture, and I'm so proud that I can speak another language and not just English. And I am really proud of how we grew up. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't easy. It was definitely difficult, but it has shaped. Who I am today, and I'm sure it's shaped who you are today as well, Elle. So, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty cool. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah, it's it's such a big part of us. Um, so, if speaking about that, so if there is any new ladies coming into the country, we have some new members in our Women of the World community who just recently immigrated to US, uh, living here. Is there anything that you can, any advice that you can give them? Yeah, for sure. Oh, my gosh. Um, and I wish this advice had been given to me when I first came here. So mm -hmm. even though I was from Australia, I did. I really struggled living in the U.S. I found for the first, I'm going to say, 12 to 18 months, I just found that, you know, you don't know anyone. Things are really, really different. So even though I came from an English-speaking country, things were different. Um, the way you did things were differently. The way we speak is different. Like I'm very upfront and, you know, in like, bang, here it is. And um, I found that Americans really sometimes took offense to it. And I found that odd. Like if I complimented somebody on how they dressed, I, I was kind of told that I can't do that. I'm like, well, why? It's giving them a compliment. But my recommendation is go out and find, number one, first of all, find a networking group um, where there are people from your nationality, wherever you are from. So usually Facebook will have that type of group. So it could be, um, so for example, they had Australians in San Francisco Bay area and just connect with those, with that group because there'll be people who felt the same way or are feeling the same way as you. I know Daniela just joined and I suggested to her, you know, go and find Italians in San Francisco and there is that group set up. So that would be one, definitely 1000%. You're already in women of the world. So Find some people who are even from the country that you've come from and connect with them and I'm sure they'll be able to help out and share different stories. But they're the two main things. And, you know, as much as you possibly can, step out of your comfort zone and just connect with people. Um, but connect with people who are new to the country as well because they're the ones that know how you're feeling and they're the ones who will actually be able to open, will, will be, I think will be more open to bringing you into their network and getting to meet their friends who are probably in the same would be my suggestion. I love that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Linda. It's uh, it's so true. And I remember when I moved here, um, I did exactly that. So, you know, we, we, we gravitate toward that, what we know, or we want to be part of what we know. And, and I remember I met a, a, a girl, she, um, he, we, we used to be li live in Phoenix, and so she was from Moscow, and so we were speaking, but she lived here for, for I think, like four, five years before I came. <clears throat> and so the thing that she told me is kind of stayed with me that, uh, you know, don't assume, don't make assumptions. And I would say, you know, also just being open-minded about things. We come and we question things because that's not how we do them back. Like I remember myself, like I would question just because I know how they done back there, but it doesn't mean they cannot be done here. 
differently, right? So it's just so interesting, but it's definitely such an amazing growth, right? To to so I totally agree. So thank you for that. So my last question uh, will be: We kind of went over, but this is so good. I'm so enjoying. <laughs> Uh, so really quickly, if you were to, if you, if you were to speak with yourself when you were five year old, so if we go back you know, right now, you're yeah. talking to five uh, Linda, who's five year old Linda. What will you tell her? I would say to her, everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. And I would also say to her, because um, I, th I think everyone finds it so difficult to to find work and be happy in work. And so my five-year-old self would say, figure out what you're passionate about, figure out what sets your soul on fire, what really uplifts you, and find a career that you can do that incorporates that. And mm -hmm. so you're doing what you love, you're doing what you're passionate about, you're doing what comes naturally, but you're also earning an income. You're being paid for doing what you love doing. So that's what my five-year-old self would tell me, um, you know, and be strong and don't listen to everybody else around you. Don't let anyone steal your thunder in the sense of taking away what makes you happy. And mm -hmm. usually if people are doing that, then they're not happy themselves. Um, mm -hmm. Find what you love to do. Don't listen to the noise around you. Don't listen to the noise in your head. Trust your gut and then go with it. And um, I think you're gonna be happy for, for many, many days or hopefully for the rest of your life as well. So um, yeah. That's what so, my whole self would tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I fail love forward it. as well. Don't be afraid to fail. It's it's you know you've got to make mistakes to move forward. So don't beat yourself up about it. That is so good. Well, thank you, Linda, for taking the time. It is always so good to. <laughs> talk to you and have you and so if you want to share we're going to share it in the comments if you want to share how people can find you and connect with you as well that would be great no worries thank you so much for having me Elle. you have got an amazing amazing group i know you're going to just take this worldwide i can't wait to be a part of it <laughs> you're gonna be awesome thank you thanks everyone for listening whoever you thank are you. thank you have a great day have a great day everyone have a, a great weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.